Let's talk about the monster maniacs, Hulk Hogan and Randy. I can't imagine the chat right now. Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage versus the Butcher and Kevin Sullivan. And uh, one of the featured spots of the match took place when the Butcher puts Hogan to sleep. Savage then jumps off the top rope and hits Hogan with the elbow drop to revive Hulk Hogan. That was the that was the play on that. What do you what do you think about that? Using a main maneuver to rega- revive the guy. My first question as an outsider, if I just had that limited information you just gave me, would who fell down there in this match? Who this fell is down? A, this yeah. is a falling down business. Mm-hmm. Now, Shorty is not going to fall at all. He will wibble wobble and spin around and then do something resembling a bump. Uh, Hogan ain't going to be out bouncing around. Who was Beefcake, the other guy, Shorty's partner? Yeah, Beefcake, now known as the Butcher. Not a big bumper. No. Uh, But I would think he would have to be one of the guys taking the bumps. He would have to be. Oh, yeah. Beefcake and Savage, I guess probably were the flow guys of this match butcher uh, uh, no, we'll just call him beefcake because uh, that's just how we know him butcher beefcake butcher the beefcake he takes the big leg drop and then after another savage elbow drop he takes the pin all right so he wins the match hogan defeats him this this amazing tag team of shorty and as you call him kevin sullivan and butcher Vader then attacks Hulk Hogan after the match. Hulk no sold the power bomb. Okay, did you hear Hogan no sold Vader's power bomb? Gets up immediately following the Vader attack. Savage and Hogan hold Vader at bay with steel chairs, and the show goes off the air. So there you go. It's the first televised Randy Savage match. They bury his finish by having him use it to revive Hulk. Okay. They did use that spot back in the WWF days when the Million Dollar Man put Hogan to sleep in a tag match. But still, they're going back to the well. And uh, now that's that's his first time on television. We're doing that. Vader, the homegrown monster for WCW. What good is it for having him just totally say, screw you to Vader's finish and pop right up? I just don't understand some of the decision making with the booking here. Nor will you ever. Because never, if you go 10, 20, 30 years down the road and they pull that clip and go back and could ask me what's going on here, it don't make sense then. It don't make sense now. It didn't make sense when they did it. The thing was about putting you to sleep is they cut off your carotid artery. The shoot rendition is... They get behind you. They go across the carotid artery, which is a main main blood supply to your brain, and they choke you out with it. The deal was they had to sit you up and get blood flow back to the back of your neck for you to come out of it. That's the way it was originally built. It's like when you choke a guy out and you let him go, he don't just pop up. It takes a while to get blood back in his body, the proper parts of his body, on a legitimate deal, a choke out, before the guy can function anymore. Certainly dropping an elbow, which probably landed on his chest, right? I oh, yeah. imagine. Yeah. That's going to knock him back to consciousness. See, if they would have just tried to take care of some stuff again, make it make sense. Yeah. That, First that's one of your one of your one of your keys to to every talent you talk to. It's got to it, make sense. It, it's far fetched, but let's just say you rolled Hogan over on his belly, and he was laying flat on his belly as Randy jumps. You spin him over, and he lands on the back of his neck. And in some weird universe, that knocks the jogs the the, the blood supply and gets it going. It would at least fall somewhat in line of what we've been told all these years and decades buddy i saved it for last and it's you and johnny b bad actually opened this show clash of champions you defended the tv title successfully against him with a little help from colonel parker your longtime take uh, it friend. yeah take it 
Bad was chasing him around the ring. Uh, uh, following his interference, Parker made his way into the ring, and you were able to hit Bad with the DDT, buddy, with a quick one, two, three. According to the readers of the Wrestling Observer, this was the best match of the night. You got 88 first place votes. On the other hand, that tag match that we just talked about won the worst match of the night. Think about it. This company, buddy, is still in transition. It's almost a tale of two presentations of the wrestling process uh, uh, product. product. You have, yeah, you have that over-the-top presentation of Hogan. You got that top-line creative of being Savage. But then on the other hand, you're sitting there defending the TV title in matches uh, that are predicated on wrestling, not necessarily showbiz. Uh, what do you think about like the two very different styles of what's going on here with WCW in 1995? I think that I would have rather had the rating for the worst match of the night and swap paydays with those guys. Wow. There you go. See what, see, I, see what I did there? I did. Let's see how the uh, audience responds to that. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Andrew Hermas, first one in the chat says, correct. Correct. That a boy, Andrew. You get it. Yeah. Okay. It can get to a certain point where personal pride doesn't pay the bills. Get that, get those, get some zeros on my shit. Yeah. And, and actually he may be responding to, uh, to a question, uh, from, uh, Andrew Eddie Prather actually. So now he just gave us the dead look. So he wasn't responding to that, but I tried to give you credit, but Oh, well, Lil Patty says, wow, he can't believe that, you know, they can't believe that. Hey, I would have taken the paycheck. But it's the business, right, Arn? That's, that's I just would have liked to got yeah. one of those paychecks. Just one. Just we one. didn't even get into all the numbers of what Hogan has no. done so far here in the first oh. few months, money-wise. But it's incredible the amount of money that he's making. Guys like us, and I'm guys, I'm just like all you guys sitting home listening to us. I'm the guy that that everybody says is really valuable. You know, man, that guy can run a hand truck or a, or a forklift or a dump truck, like nobody's business, but they pay him a nice salary, but it's nowhere near the guys that are sitting in the office, having some lady take dictation and getting the big payoff. 